For safety professionals, it is very important to understand the fundamental differences between a complicated system and a complex socio-technical system. First, the difference between complicated and complex. What does it actually mean when they say socio-technical complex system? Each of those words has a very specific meaning, which um, regrettably is disregarded in many aspects of safety management. So let's get into it. Why do we need to talk about complexity? It says in the um, ICAO safety management manual that aviation is a complex system that requires the assessment of human contribution to safety and an understanding of how human performance might be affected by its multiple and interrelated components. Okay, so the definition there is already a complex system. It's not just a complex system, it's a complex socio-technical system because there's people involved, they interact with technology and other people, and technology in, interacts with other technology, which generates a lot of interactions that are unpredictable. Now, why is this important? A complicated system is what we all know and love, it's machines. As a technical person myself, that's what attracted me in the first place to aviation. Um, you try to figure out how all these uh, wonderful machines work, how the things work together, how they are designed, and uh, what makes them tick, so to speak. So, despite having many different parts, say a 777 can have up to a million parts, um, the relationship between those parts the way they function together and that's the definition of a system a system is a combination of elements that work together to perform a certain function uh, the way that a complicated system works is rather predictable we have no surprises in how all these elements work together and we can perfectly model how the system will behave now in case of a failure of a complicated system a machine Troubleshooting is usually fairly straightforward. We analyze the system, meaning we break it down to its smallest components. We go look down and inward till we find the one component which failed. Failure in this sense is it broke down. It no longer performs its function within the system and that makes the whole system inoperative. Now, Fixing that system is quite straightforward. You just take another fresh component, you swap that out, and normally the system should regain functionality again. Now, for the reasons why, we can probably point to a very limited uh, set of reasons why that particular element failed. Maybe the element was not up to specification, maybe the specification was wrong, maybe the um, designer did not design it properly for its function maybe the maintainer didn't install it correctly or maybe the operator did not follow the specific one best operating method for the whole system and as a result the system failed because the element failed now complex system is very different so first of all what is a complex system so taking the previous example a complicated system a car and we put that into traffic well, now we're adding one complicated system to many other complicated systems, meaning other cars, but also the road itself is a system, traffic lights are a system, and we are adding that now to the social factor, which is other human operators for these systems. Now, in a complex socio-technical system like traffic, we do not have any predictive capabilities anymore. We don't we can't predict all the interactions that are possible between all these different elements. And that's the definition of complexity. It's a constant and dynamic interaction, interaction which is constantly changing, and the elements themselves are constantly changing them, themselves. It's not a set, a fixed set of elements which are involved in the system. They, they go in and out of the system. Now, what kind of consequences does that have? Well, if you're driving in that traffic, you cannot predict what's going to happen 500 yards down the road because of the many unpredictable interactions. Interestingly, 
a failure of a system, say a failure of the, the function of a, a highway, for instance, is to provide uh, capacity for traffic to flow smoothly. Now, under certain circumstances, a traffic jam occurs. Interestingly, if you go look for the causes of a traffic jam, you will not find an overt failure of one of the elements in that system. It's not necessarily that a car specifically had a breakdown and you can dig down like with a complicated uh, system to that particular element that made the whole system fail. No, traffic jam, the failure of that complex system can be due to the interaction of the different elements, the different people in the system. So for instance, one person uh, braked forcibly um, and there's a wave of traffic behind him that five kilometers down the road led to a traffic jam. And that's be unpredictable behavior of the system. Now, if you're starting to look for a cause of a failure of a complex system, there will be many elements afterwards which seem to be broken, but which probably are not necessarily uh, causal factors in making the system fail. And this is something our brain has difficulty uh, coping with. Our brain likes a simple cause and effect relationship, but in complex system that cause and effect relationship isn't always there. So it's very important to remind yourself that in a complex system, the behavior of the elements of the system is emergent, meaning that they behave as a consequence of the conditions within the system. People react to each other, for instance, like a flock of birds. Uh, a flock of birds can have a very uh, complex pattern of movement, but actually there's a few simple rules that are governing the behavior of those birds within that flock of birds. Meaning, uh, uh, one bird will always look to separate themselves uh, sufficiently from their neighbors, they will follow the average heading of their neighbors and they will follow the average heading of the flock. And those three rules, they govern the behavior of the individual birds within the flock, which can create a very complex and unpredictable pattern afterwards. Now, what's the impact for safety management? In safety management, we have to understand that that behavior of people and even uh, uh, technical systems within our complex system are consequences of the system conditions and they're not necessarily causes. So when we go look at a system and see fail, failed elements, you have to ask the question, was that failure a consequence of the breakdown of the system or was it a cause? Very unlikely it's a cause. We have to look more, instead of going down and inward, go up and outward. In, uh, looking at uh, analyzing complex system failure in social technical systems we have to look at the interactions between the various elements of our system now if we don't do that if we insist on simplifying a complex system as a, if it were only a complicated system you're only going to look at the technical part of the system did people follow the procedure the one operating method or was there a specific element that broke down? Now, that can lead to blind spots in our um, safety investigation and subsequently in our safety recommendations. If we fail to take into account systems thinking when we are investigating complex systems, we can fail to understand how our system is vulnerable for failure. So later on, we will talk a lot about also um, our mental uh, models, which are part of our biology. And as a safety investigator and also a safety promoter, it's essential that we understand these different modes of thinking.